49ers Training Camp Rewind, where we're recapping everything you might have missed in the 49ers' third block of training camp practices. And as always, we've got a special guest dialing in momentarily. 49ers linebacker Fred Warner is hanging out with us to discuss his third NFL training camp and how the 49ers' legendary trio can take strides in their second full year together. But first, let's recap. Temps were high, and so was the intensity this week. The 49ers defense was the storyline of the week with all three levels making standout plays. DJ Jones returned to practice after missing multiple days while in concussion protocol, and he might have had the top play of Wednesday's practice. The defensive lineman made an interception on a tip pass from Nick Mullins, and he returned the ball near the end zone. Running back Jeff Wilson Jr. caught up to Jones and punched the ball out just ahead of the goal line. And as you'd expect, yes, the defense erupted after the play. Jonathan Cyprian hauled in his third pick of camp, as did cornerback Richard Sherman. And speaking of the vet, during an individual drill on Wednesday, Sherman came down with what looked like an ankle injury. Shortly thereafter, the veteran corner adjusted his cleats and returned to practice. According to Shanahan, the corner just got stepped on a little twisted up with a teammate, but there is no injury to report all as well. There was buzz swirling that Jimmy Garoppolo threw three interceptions during a practice. Well, to be honest, it wasn't too bad. It just proves that the 49ers defense was making plays. Sherm proved to be just fine after that, jumping a route and hauling in an interception. And DJ Jones tipped a pass that fell into the arms of rookie defensive lineman Javon Kinlaw. Tight end Jordan Reed made his debut and was one of the 49ers highlights this week during one-on-one -on -one drills. He caught all six of his passes against the 49ers safeties this week. And the team held the closest thing to the real thing on Friday, hosting practice inside of Levi Stadium. The offense scored three touchdowns on the day, one by Raheem Mostert, the other by Tavon Austin, and one for the new tight end, Jordan Reed. And on to some injury updates. George Kittle left midway through practice on Wednesday and worked out with trainers off to the side. According to Kyle Shanahan, Kittle just had a tight hamstring and the team opted to remove him from practice for precautionary measures. Kyle Juszczyk spent Wednesday's session along the sidelines working out with San Francisco's training staff. The fullback is dealing with a hamstring strain and is likely to be week to week, according to Shanahan. Tight end Ross Dwelly missed multiple practices this week while dealing with a foot issue. Shanahan said the tight end is day to day and could return as early as next week. And it was a scary sight what we talked about last week on Sunday as Ross Reynolds went down in the final 15 minutes of practice with what appeared to be a leg injury. The guard got rolled up on a run blocking play and was carted off the field shortly thereafter. Shanahan shared some encouraging news as the offensive lineman suffered a bone bruise. Nothing torn, nothing broken. Ben Garland has missed multiple practices while suffering an ankle injury last Tuesday. According to the head coach, the injury appears worse than maybe some of the others as the center is considered to be week to week. And here's a little encouraging news, Debo Samuel. He was spotted running full speed sprints up the sideline during Wednesday's session as the wideout inches towards his return to the field. The 49ers have their final practice of camp tomorrow before focusing their attention to the Arizona Cardinals in week one. So how does this team pick up where they left off? What's the mindset heading into the season opener without a preseason? Well, let's find out. We're dialing in Fred Warner. We got him on standby. Fred, what is going on? Welcome to the 49ers training camp rewind. How does it feel to be another day closer to football? Oh, it feels great. You know, we're ready to get going after somebody else. It, it gets pretty tiring just going after each other uh, in practice, you know, against your teammates. So I think we're, we're excited about that first game coming up. It's coming uh, quick. And so we're making sure that we got to be ready to go for, for Arizona. How unique has this offseason and this training camp been for you? You guys are usually in the facility, let's say April, but now you haven't been able to rejoin your teammates since – you know, a couple of weeks ago. How has this transition been to you in readjusting to football? Yeah, it's been unique for sure. Uh, you know, like you said, it's been a lot different uh, having the off season that we did. We didn't have OTAs to come in and build that kind of chemistry and camaraderie. So coming in, I feel like we we just had to leave off on the same page from when we last saw each other, you know, back in February. And, uh, you know, I feel like we've been able to keep things pretty pretty similar to last training camp. Guys are they're hungry. They're getting after it, bringing the energy to practice. Um, 
you know, and so it's it's been good. Well, Kyle Shanahan and Robert Sala have been preaching protect the team, and that comes with protecting some of those offensive players. Typically, you know, you guys are used to being able to tackle those guys, bringing them to the ground, but not so much in training camp. What's been that challenge adjusting to practice, not able to tackle your teammates? And then also with that, how eager are you to get to week one so you can tackle? Yeah, we, we got to, uh, you know, remember at the end of the day that we're teammates and we got to make sure guys stay healthy for the season. But I feel like we, we practice like pros. Uh, you know, we're thudding guys up. We don't necessarily have to take guys to the ground to get those, uh, you know, that, those reps at tackling people live to the ground. Um, you know, it's still physical practices, and I think we're getting the most out of it. Um, but we, like you said, we're eager to get get going on our first opponent. We don't have preseason this year, so we're getting sick and tired of hitting each other. we got to go hit somebody else. Let's talk a little bit about continuity. How important is it for you to have the same guys lining up beside you? And I'm talking about Dre Greenlaw, and I'm talking about Quan Alexander. How important is it for you guys, especially as you guys try to progress this year, and having those same guys next to you in another year under the system? Yeah, continuity, I think that's huge for us, uh, not only as a linebacking group, but as a defense and as a team, uh, you know, bringing back a lot of the starters and in our room specifically, I feel like we have we have the chemistry now uh, having that year under our belt. We know we want we know one another and we're out there. We're communicating on the fly and uh, things are running a lot smoother, a lot, a lot faster. So we're able to play um, a lot faster and quicker. So, uh, you know, we're trying to get better each and every day, one percent better and uh, I think we'll like the results. All right, Fred, you're you're heading into your third NFL season. You're no longer considered a young buck, but give me a little bit of insight. What's the mindset heading into this year? How hungry is this defense, not only one, to replicate and succeed the success from last year, but also that eagerness to get back to the big dance? Uh, yeah, we, I think we know last year's in the past. Uh, we used last year as an experience, of course, and uh, – you know, I think we're all hungry to prove ourselves once again. Every year in this league, you have to prove yourself. I, that, that goes for everybody, uh, you know, especially myself. Um, you know, this is a what have you done for me lately league. And I, I just know I got to keep my head down and keep working just like the rest of the guys are. Uh, we're all hungry to get after it. And uh, we're not resting on our laurels one bit. I feel like we got a lot to prove this season. We're going to get everybody's best shot. And uh, I think we're going to be ready for it for sure. All right, Fred, so this linebacking group, you guys are always cooking up something new. Is there anything that we can expect from the heart of the 49ers defense this year? Uh, you know, you can expect a little juice, a little energy, a little swag, like you said. Uh, you know, this year we're coming with a, a new name to the group, the Block Boys, uh, you know, keeping the block hot. And, um, you know, we're excited about it. I think the defense as a whole, we're, we're excited about getting after this season and uh, being even better than we were a year ago. Okay, wait a minute. The block Boys. Tell me a little bit about this name. This is new for us. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, honestly, I think you, you probably have to ask Quan to, to really give you the, the, the meaning behind it and the depth behind it. But, uh, you know, we, we, we're all about keeping the block hot. And uh, so the Block Boys, that's kind of what we came up with. And, uh, you know, we're sticking to it and we're excited about it. So keep the energy going. Fred, we, as always, appreciate having you. We'll definitely have to catch up with you and the Block Boys pretty soon. All right, no problem. As you know, every week we are joined by a different 49ers rookie, and this week is no different. We are joined by 49ers seventh-round pick Jawan Jennings to talk about how he's adjusting to training camp. But first, take a look at this as we give you another sneak peek into Brick by Brick that airs this Sunday at 5 p.m. Take a look at this. We're so lucky to have such an amazing uh, locker room like we do. And you could just feel the energy. Everybody was so happy to see one another, so happy to get back to work. Here we go. Get to eight and run the post. Here we go. That's better. That's closer. <laughs> Juwan, welcome to 49ers Training Camp Rewind. Uh, what? Let's talk about it. Training Camp, your first NFL training camp. What has it been like for you? What's going on in your mind? It was just, it was just, a, it was just a humbling moment. You know, uh, I had to, I like, I like to talk to myself a lot. You know, so to come in this environment, it's like, man, I'm here. Like, you know, like this is Levi Stadium. Like I'm walking inside Levi Stadium and. You know, I had to go check out the field and, you know, just to see how green the grass was. It's just, 
man, it's just a lot of excitement just, you know, going through my body, but then having to realize, you know, and pull myself back to reality that, yeah, this is day one, then day two, just reminding myself to, you know, just take it a day at a time and um, one step after another. All right, so let's talk about the fans that I'm sure it's not a lot of them, but let's say there's fans that have never seen you play. How would you describe who Jawan Jennings, the wide receiver, is? A yak, a yak guy, yak monster. Definitely going to bring that physicality part into the game, you know, from a receiver standpoint, not just from catching the ball, but blocking as well. And uh, just a winner, you know. A guy that's going to go out there and uh, you, got, you got three seconds on the clock, Ball's floating in the air, now on zero. I'm the guy that's going to come down with it. And uh, that's the way I would just explain myself to anyone who wants to know how I play. Okay, I know it starts with cementing yourself on the 49ers roster. That's step one. But I want to look at step two, three, four, and so on. What are your goals for year one in the NFL? Um, first goal is just to get a cleat on that green grass we were just talking about. That's the first goal. And our next goal is just, um, you know, help this team in any way that I can. And um, personally, you know, uh, any ball just thrown to me, it, it's my job to come down with it. And that's that's my main three goals right there. Juwan, thank you so much. Good luck to you out there for the rest of camp and practice. Uh, looking forward to seeing more of you soon. Y'all have a good day. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, each show, we're dedicating some time to highlight different areas of the 49ers community impact. It's pretty similar to what's done when we have you, the fans, here at our open practices. But like everything else, this offseason has been unlike any other. But that didn't stop the 49ers from continuing their impact in the community by supporting those affected by COVID-19. With so many frontline heroes risking their own lives to keep the world going, the 49ers wanted to give some love to healthcare workers and first responders. The team joined partners Pete's Coffee and Mountain Mike's Pizza to deliver pick-me-ups for those keeping us safe and healthy. At the end of the 2020 school year, we all know that graduates who missed out on their commencement ceremonies they've always dreamed of and pictured. Well, our players, they hosted our 49ers at home virtual graduation presented by Chegg to help celebrate them. Tens of thousands of graduates ranging from preschool to grad school tuned in to hear 49ers defensive lineman and pianist D. Ford, uh, words of wisdom from Jimmy Garoppolo, George Kittle, Raheem Mostert, Steve Young, Jerry Rice, their commencement speaker, Joe Staley, and so many more. And while the pandemic has affected literally all of us, there are some 49ers faithful who have been impacted more than others. Mike McGlinchey partnered up with Visa and had the honor of surprising five special Bay Area families. And those families nominated by our outstanding nonprofit partners have been struggling due to the effects of COVID-19. Mike made socially distant deliveries, gifting each family with $1,000 in Visa gift cards and set them up with Niners gear for the season. Eric Armstead, who has been using his platform to ensure that all students have access to a quality education through his charity, the Armstead Academic Project, made sure virtual classrooms were still engaging for young students with the launch of his program, Storytime with Eric Armstead. His series of virtual book readings covered topics like Earth Day and racial equality and stretched as far as a classroom in Qatar. It's great to see that even a global pandemic can't keep these players and our partners from making a difference in the community. I know they have some exciting plans for their outreach this season, so we hope you'll stay tuned on all of the 49ers social channels, including at 49ers Community and 49ers.com. A super big thanks to Fred Warner and Jawan Jennings for stopping by to chat with us. And a, a reminder, 49ers second episode of Brick by Brick airs tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Make sure you guys catch that. And also, guess what? We are just about over two weeks away from week one of the 2020 season. Are you ready? Because I sure am. Make sure you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we will be back next week for a very special episode of 49ers Training Camp Rewind as we are joined by 49ers first-round pick, Javon Kinlaw. We'll see you guys next week.